Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Brady turns himself into the Paulus Kristen, does her best to protect Brady as Jada closes in. Today on Days of Our Lives, Tate comes cleans, Holly blames herself, Jada presents her case to EJ, and Kristen warns Brady. Please note that if you purchase something by clicking on the link within this story, we may receive a small commission of the sale. Days of Our Lives prepares to say bye-bye to Connie, and maybe a few others, as her boss lights a fire we asterisk never asterisk expected. As Tate and Holly try to sneak out of the hospital unseen, they bump into Brady. Brady is shocked to see Tate in town, on crutches and with Holly. Tate comes clean about staying on Smith Island instead of going to La Crosse camp. At the hospital, Maggie recalls to Sarah that when she lost her parents in a car accident and was the only survivor, part of her wished she died with them. She was grieving, scared, and angry. It's okay for Sarah to feel the same about what happened to her. Sarah thinks Xander is angry enough for both of them. She asks how Maggie dealt with not being able to walk. Maggie recounts feeling like she owed it to her parents to keep the farm running. She had to learn to live her new normal and urges Sarah not to give up. Bethany Frankel talks sober curious trends and forever young Rosie. In the square, Jada tells Xander they have a suspect in Sarah's hit and run, but she can't divulge their name. Demanding an answer, Xander grabs her arm to prevent her from leaving. Jada understands he's angry, but she will find the person who hit Sarah, not him. She suggests he get his hands off her. A contrite Xander releases her arm, apologizing. Jada has to speak with the DA before she can proceed, but assures Xander he'll know something soon. By now, hanging up with someone at the Dimera mansion, Kristen tells Stefano's portrait that Brady's car is now flat as a pancake. She did what she had to to protect her family just like he would have. E.G. smugly enters, wondering just what it is she did. Kristen says to protect the family legacy, she had to fire Ava because of Gaby's ultimatum. E.J. calls it a shockingly unconvincing story, advising her not to share her secrets aloud with their father's portrait. When John comes home after visiting his dad, Marlena tells him about Brady's car getting stolen. She's not sure when it happened, but Jada is trying to figure out a timeline. John deduces Javit is connecting it to Sarah's hit and run and worries Brady's involved. Marlena knows Brady never would have left Sarah if he had hit her. John agrees, unless he'd been drinking. In the hospital lobby, a fuming Brady asks Holly for a mint alone with Tate. She steps away, leaving Tate to plead his case. Hasn't Brady ever lied because he was scared of how someone would react? Brady guiltily flashes back to Kristen, telling him she got rid of his car. Xander arrives. Tate tells him how sorry he is about Sarah. Xander shares the police might have a suspect as Brady quietly stresses. As Sarah tearfully worries she won't be able to keep up with Victoria, Holly enters her hospital room. Holly confesses to Maggie about Tate staying at the Horton cabin. She explains she used Maggie's key to let him in. Maggie notes that's why she couldn't find it the other night. Holly asks, what night? Maggie explains Sarah was coming home to help her look for the key to use for her and Xander's honeymoon, but she was hit by the car. Oh my God, Holly exclaims. What happened to you is all my fault. Sarah assures her niece it's not. Holly runs out in tears, passing Xander on his way in. As E.G. surmises Kristen's plotting has to do with Brady, Jada arrives at the mansion. She needs to talk with E.J. about Sarah's case. Kristen leaves the room but stops in the foyer to listen. Jada tells E.J. about connecting a car to the hit and run, but the owner claims it was stolen. Without it, they don't have absolute proof. Does he want to indict based anyway? E.J. asks who the suspect is. Jada tells him it's Brady. By all means, E.J. says, smirking. Arrest him. In the foyer, Kristen closes her eyes and lets out a slow breath. E.G. assures Jada his and Brady's family feud is not a factor. There's potentially enough evidence to win a conviction, so she should arrest him. As Jada strolls to the front door, Kristen asks if she has any leads. Jada knows she was eavesdropping. Despite Brady being Rachel's father, 
Jada asks if Kristen knows anything. Kristen brusquely says she doesn't and walks away. At the townhouse, Marlena admits to John that she had concerns about Brady while John was in Greece. But Paul told her Brady had been going to meetings. She wishes she had learned from Eric's past and intervened. John assures Marlena she's not responsible. Brady will have to own up to it. He calls and leaves a message for his son. In the hospital lobby, Tate muses to a distracted Brady about the psychopath who hit Sarah. When Tate gets his father's attention, Brady accuses him of changing the subject. Tate again pleads his case about spending the summer on Smith Island, pointing out nothing bad happened. He'll accept any punishment, but please don't keep him and Holly apart. Brady gets a text from Kristen telling him to run because the police are about to arrest him. Brady tells Tate there's something he has to do and leaves. Holly finds a perplexed Tate in the lobby. He tells her how weird his dad was acting. He has no idea if he's in trouble or not. A distraught Holly tells Tate that Sarah's accident is because of them. In Sarah's hospital room, Sander declares Holly's not to blame. That rests solely on the driver. Also, Jada has a prime suspect, but she wouldn't give him a name. When Kristen returns to EJ in the dimmer living room, he says the hit-and-run suspect is her baby daddy. Something tells me you knew exactly what was going on. As Jada calls in an arrest warrant at the police station, Brady enters. There's no need for that, he says. I'm here. Next on Days of Our Lives, Justin overhears Fiona, and Xander presents Sarah with an idea. Sponsored content.